So today is the Sunday of the Publican and the Pharisee, and it is the first of four Sundays that are leading us into the great fast in the land. And so um, this next week, because of that, is fast free. And then we'll go through a cycle of going back to regular fast and then omitting meat, and then uh, we'll have forgiveness or cheese fair Sunday and begin the fast uh, in its fullness. So this is beginning to prepare us um, uh, even though we're totally fast-free this next week. So uh, that's, that's to give us some sustenance to begin, I guess. So I've mentioned this before in terms of these, uh, these two men, the publican and the Pharisee, um, but they, what comes to mind as a picture uh, is two patients that I have. And one of those patients um, doesn't know he's sick. And he does a lot of good things. He lifts weights, he runs, uh, he watches his diet, uh, but he won't take his medicines for his blood pressure. And his blood pressure is pretty severe. Noir sees a lot of these. <laughs> Only most of those are not doing well with other things, but this man is. So he, he's, he's doing well with everything else, but he comes in to see me and his blood pressure is sky high. He's not taking the medicines that others have put him on, and, and I try to get him on a good regimen, and he, he'll disappear, and he'll be what we call a no-show for his next appointment, which is usually within a month. The more severe the blood pressure, I might see him much sooner than that. Uh, but he doesn't come back for months and months and months, and, and his prescriptions have run out long before he comes back. And so, um, he, and repeatedly, this happens. He rarely makes appointments. His, you know, his uh, three-month uh, prescription from April of 2023 is the last prescription he's filled, and so, um, so, so he's not doing well with that. And so he doesn't really. He denies that he has a problem. He doesn't acknowledge that he has a problem with his blood pressure. And so sadly, his heart and his kidneys are likely being irreversibly damaged. And actually, his vessels all over his body are. Um, and so a lot of organs can be damaged by that, not just the heart and kidneys, but the brain uh, also especially. Um, and his, his hypertension may lead him to have dementia later in life as well, if he doesn't have a stroke first. So he might have a stroke, he might have a heart attack, his heart may just get weaker and weaker, and he has what we call heart failure, um, and just loses the ability to pump with his heart. Um, and um, his kidneys may fail, and I'd have to send him then to Dr. Manser uh, to, to uh, di replace his kidneys, basically, either with dialysis or a kidney transplant. Or what often happens with particularly severe hypertension is that people just die suddenly and um, as a result of the hypertension. But I have another patient who is very concerned. He knows that he has high blood pressure. Uh, he comes to clinic for all of his scheduled appointments. So when I start him on, on a regimen, he'd come back every month, just like I scheduled him. Um, and he gets his refills uh, and uh, takes, uh, takes his medicines as prescribed lets me know if he's having any problem with them and we can switch him up. Uh, he humbly confesses when he misses any doses. And I try to reassure him, if he occasionally misses one, that's not, not probably a problem. Uh, so uh, just don't miss two in a row. Uh, so, but he, he confesses that and, and he has avoided damage to his heart and his kidneys and his brain. Um, so one of these patients is like the publican I'm sorry, like the Pharisee that we read about, right? So the guy who is, seems to be doing a lot of the right things, but is not doing what he needs to do primarily. He's, in this case, he's not taking, he's not refilling his medications. Um, so he, in, in his mind, he has no need for a doctor. Just like the Pharisee in his mind really has no need for God. He just wants the praise of men. 
and he derives little benefit uh, from occasionally coming to see me. Well, the other patient sees his great need for the doctor and he benefits greatly. And so, so we see that's like the publican who sees himself as in great need of God's mercy. So, so as I say, these two patients are like the publican and the Pharisee. The Pharisee brags of his wonderful spiritual health. And yes, he's doing many good things, just like the patient that's lifting weights and dieting and running. So the, the, the Pharisee is doing many good things and Christ is not criticizing for that. That's good that he's doing those things, but he's doing them for the show of, uh, to other men and he's praying for the show of other men um, and he's rotten inside because of his pride and because of his sin and because he doesn't acknowledge that sin and he doesn't confess that sin. And so as my second patient, the publican sees his sin and confesses it to God and goes home forgiven and healed by God. Even though the Pharisee and maybe all the other people in the temple think that he's a really rotten person. He's a tax collector. And they were, back then they were bad. Today tax collectors are great. They're government employees. Doing a very good job. So, as I said, today is the first of four Sundays that prepare us for the great fast for Lent. Uh, and what we're called to do today and to identify with in these two men is not to say, oh, I'm like the publican, but rather to see ourselves as the Pharisee. And this is our first step in our preparation for the great fast is to see our own sin and to see what is lacking in us and to turn completely to God. So we're to see that we're like the Pharisee, proud of whatever I may have done that is good, comparing myself to others and reassuring myself that I am not as sinful as they are. And that brings to mind the story that I know all of you are familiar with about the two campers, two men who were out camping and a big bear starts charging at them. And one of them sits down and starts putting on his running shoes, sneakers, tennis shoes, whatever you want to call them, depending on what generation you are. And the other one says, you can't outrun a bear. And the guy putting on his running shoes said, I don't need to outrun the bear, I just need to outrun you. <laughs> and so that's the way the Pharisee was looking at things. He was seeing that he just needed to envision himself as being better than other men, and especially this publican over here. And so he's gonna be saved if, if he is better than this uh, um, publican and comparing himself to other men. And what the fathers tell us is that we're not to compare ourselves to one another. And if we do, we should see ourselves always as being first among sinners, as we say in our prayer before the Eucharist. And so instead, we're to compare ourselves with God. And when we compare ourselves to God, when we compare ourselves to Christ, then we'll honestly see that we fall way short. And we can't, like the publican thought, do good deeds and do good works, all of which may be very good to do, but that is not going to earn us our salvation and our standing, if you will, with God. So this Pharisee is blind to the sin of pride along with many other sins um, and we're to see ourselves like him, to see ourselves that, that we're blind to the sin that we have, and especially the sin of pride. The Pharisee boldly raises his eyes to heaven, but his heart is directed or stays on the earth. He, he the gospel says he even prays to himself. He's not praying to God, he's praying to himself. And he's praying so other men can see and hear him. So we are to see ourselves as like the Pharisee, but we're to strive 
to be like the publican, the tax collector, confessing that we have fallen short in serving God and that we've sinned in many ways, not judging others or comparing myself to others and confessing my sin of pride, which leads to many other sins, as we're taught, and seeking first and foremost to put on humility before God and before other men. So the publican cast his eyes to the earth and sees himself earthly, if you will, and in humility and in penance, but he sincerely prays to God, as Christ tells us, and then while his heart ascends to heaven. And not that I fully understand it, but many of you are familiar with St. Siloan and his disciples, uh, Father, I think now St. Sifroni, and uh, Father Zacharias, who many of you have met. Um, the, um, and what he taught, what St. Siloan taught, was, which is not easy to understand, he says, um, keep your mind in hell and despair not. So what he's saying is that, in part, is to fully acknowledge that we are here on the earth and we're really sinful and we're not doing very well, but our hearts should ascend to heaven. Our hearts and our prayers should ascend to God. So today as we begin our journey of preparation for the great fast, may we see how much we are our need for the eternal physician and being a no-show in true spirituality. And so instead, we are to strive to be like the publican, sincerely humble before God and man, willing to confess our sins to God and running to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as the eternal physician and healer of our souls. And may we pray as the publican did God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And we can do that over and over and over again as we approach and then enter into the great fast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.